What's going on everybody? This is DK Dynamite and today we're gonna be talking about the upcoming sandbox mode known as DMZ, the first details and what it means for the future. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below because we have very close to 100,000 subscribers here on the main channel and I really appreciate it. Also drop a like and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Modern Warfare 2, Warzone 2, Warzone Mobile, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Now it was confirmed that Modern Warfare 2 is currently the number one best-selling game over on Steam and it's on Valve's new top sellers chart with over 100 109,000 players currently playing the MW2 beta over on Steam, which is crazy. It's awesome to see Call of Duty back on Steam again since it has been quite a number of years. But with that being said, we also had a live action trailer from Modern Warfare 2, which premiered over in Japan. And I believe this leaked out a couple of weeks ago, but people out there were getting DMCA claims for sharing the footage over on YouTube or Twitter. But now it's officially been released, so you guys can see. I'll leave the link to it down below in this video's description. And I'm sure we even get an uh, English version of this live action trailer with different actors at some point in maybe the next couple of weeks. I mean, it's also been a while since we've gotten live action trailers for new Call of Duty launches, so I'm sure they'll bring that back around since the pandemic is practically over, and it's also the beginning of COD 2.0. But now when it comes to DMZ, so over at the COD Next event, I'm fully aware that so much was revealed that day that you guys might have missed a lot of this information, and I also think there was a lot of information that kind of got buried under the core marketing for multiplayer in Warzone. That's why I'm making individual videos for Spec Ops, DMZ, and I'll make a video on raids at some point this weekend as well. So with DMZ, they dropped a blog post talking about Warzone 2.0 where they said the following. The most closely guarded leak-proof secret, that's obviously satire, in Call of Duty history can finally be revealed. There is a special extraction mode coming to Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 known as DMZ. This is a passion project for the teams at Infinity Ward and across the contributing studios, and the main premise is about choosing your own experience within the Warzone, working socially if you wish, and collecting gear to keep in your Warzone 2.0 inventory to utilize for match to match. We'll have much more to share about the host of new challenges, bounties, gameplay features, and more when DMZ launches alongside Warzone 2 on November the 16th. So there's confirmation that the mode itself is within Warzone 2's application and will be free to play, also dropping alongside the Battle Royale this November, which is crazy. If anything, I would not have been mad if this mode was maybe saved until Season 1 Reloaded, since Season 1 is also starting the same day Warzone 2 drops. I would not have been mad if they waited on this one, but they are going all out, dropping as much as they can before the devs go on holiday break, obviously in mid to late December. So I I think this is a good thing. If the mode comes out and there's any issues, they can iron that out long before they go on vacation. In comparison to last year with what happened during the launch of Warzone Pacific, Caldera, that came out, devs went on vacation practically instantly, and nothing really got fixed about that experience until after the new year. Now, it is funny how we've been talking about DMZ as a mode for maybe the last year-ish. It's been quite some time discussing this because there have been plenty of rumors discussed by a lot of the verified gaming insiders in the community who have gotten info right from time to time. So, DMZ has been a hot topic of discussion for a while, and we just finally got confirmation of his existence over at the COD Next event, but also during COD Next, some developers had this to say about the mode itself. It's a rich sandbox where you can define your own win condition, you infiltrate Al Mazra, then decide to extract when the time is right, it's played across the entire map. There will be AI occupying large sections of the environment through strongholds, you can choose which objective you want to accomplish or choose varieties of activities in the world. You can hunt other players or avoid them entirely. You can explore secrets of Al Mazra throughout the DMZ experience. So this is cool to hear. I mean, not only is it PvPVE, but it's also an opportunity to really just explore the map itself. So you can't really do that in Battle Royale, can you? It's a little hard to get that done unless there's private matches for Al Mazra, which I'm sure there will be at some point in the next couple of months, maybe right away at launch, if anything. So this is going to be great. I mean, with DMZ being on the Warzone 2 map, it does spark a couple of questions, though. So first off, how updates will work for this. Now, the fact that it's free to play just means there is unlimited potential for a mode like this. If it was locked behind a pay wall or just within the MW2 app specifically, I don't think this mode would have much of a future, especially if it's like an escape from Tarkov experience, which is what the Gaming Insiders have compared this mode to. For a mode on that scale, I know Escape from Tarkov also isn't free, but I think within Call of Duty, a mode like that definitely has to be free to have a healthy player base for the rest of the year. Now, it's being said by many insiders out there that the mode itself has been in development for many, many years, which has me thinking that if they're ready to drop it as soon as this November, the mode should be done. And I could definitely see this mode being so massive to the point where every season the roadmap's gonna be huge at least I hope so we're talking plenty of healthy updates to multiplayer with maps weapons modes maybe some updates in spec ops if that mode remains popular and then some crazy expansions to both warzone 2 and then DMZ and then we'll talk more about raids because that's gonna be something really exclusive to I think each new season it won't be something that gets some type of continuous support I think it'll just be a one big drop type of system every season but we'll go more into that in a video later this weekend but if there were any mode 
mode that had to be cut off, if anything, later on in the year, if there were any mode that had to stop getting support, I would probably vote for Spec Ops. Now, I talked more about Spec Ops in a previous video linked down below, but it has been said it's a two-player only experience with several missions taking place on some of the ground war maps on Almazra. So that's going to be fun. I don't know if four-player support is coming to that mode later in the year. Maybe that's not happening because of DMZ being a big mode and more resources went into that. But if I had to choose what should stop getting support, I'm not voting multiplayer. I'm not voting Warzone. Definitely not the new DMZ and especially not the raids thing, which again, we'll talk about later. So I think Spec Ops should be the mode that if anything has to stop getting updates after like season one. Now, I do also feel like DMZ is kind of going to be the Spec Ops for the year, the quote unquote third mode that gets played the most. Even though Spec Ops launches with Modern Warfare 2 at the end of October, I just don't see that mode ever reaching a scale they're trying to reach with DMZ. So if anything, I think the balance this year will be MP, Warzone, and DMZ, and then the occasional raid every time that drops every season too. Now, here are some other updates about DMZ, which you may have missed. These were posted over the last couple of months. We have contracts known as safe, elimination, and hostage. Again, not final. Take it with a grain of salt. Able to interact with buy stations, UAV towers, surface-to-air missile sites, gas stations, and even intel. There'll be three different types of strongholds in the mode itself. We have a super stronghold tier three, a hero stronghold tier two, and a basic stronghold at tier one. We obviously got a glimpse of strongholds over in Warzone 2 already, which means you walk into an area or a building and there's a bunch of AI kind of holding down that position and they could be harder depending on what tier you're actually going up against. In Warzone, I think it was only one specific tier you can go up against, but in DMZ, it'll be three different tiers. So depending on how hard they are, you got to really use everything to your advantage, take out the AI and get a bunch of exclusive rewards for beating all of them, whether it's high rarity loot, whether it's money, whatever the case is, that'll also be something present, of course, in DMZ. But one of the coolest pieces of info that dropped from the Ghost of Hope as well is that the DMZ mode will include a marketplace where items can be bought and traded. You're able to earn skins, blueprints, and more from DMZ that are usable across multiplayer and eventually Warzone 2. So that right there is a feature that will ensure replayability for the long run. Even if DMZ was locked behind a paywall, that feature alone would really encourage people to keep playing the game or the mode itself to then earn items they can use universally across the other modes that will be updated this year. So that has me really intrigued to see how that can work. I wonder if there'll be a salvage type system where you can earn a currency in the game that you can't buy for real money, but only a currency you can earn from playing that you can then buy things with unless they just mean you can unlock things in the environment that you can then trade with maybe other players or trade to a digital marketplace in the game itself in exchange for something else. It's unclear how that would work, but just imagine if there was a trading-like system amongst actual real people in a mode like that. That would be huge, but I don't want that to touch the sensitive territory, which is NFTs, because that's probably where that would head, and I don't want to see that, at least in my opinion. I'm just not a fan of that, but that could be something similar to the way CS Ghost skins work if Call of Duty were ever to adopt a system like that for DMZ. Now, something that you guys probably missed from Gaming Insider Tom Henderson and something that Jay got even brought up as a concern is that it does look like, as of right now, Warzone 2 was built upon the foundation of DMZ, not the other way around. And that's pretty obvious considering DMZ has been in development for many years and clearly Warzone 2 hasn't been since it was still in alpha state when we played it over at COD Next. And I'm sure it's even farther in development by now, but the version that was actually playable for a large audience like us at COD Next was the alpha build. So Tom went in row. I said it from the beginning that Warzone 2 has been built with DMZ in mind, Warzone 2 feels like the DLC mode here or something. Strongholds, AI, the shop, etc. should all be for DMZ. Warzone 2 should be the classic BR experience. And I get where he's coming from with this. Again, this is also what Jay God was saying over in his clip, which is that it feels like all the new features in Warzone 2 were made with another mode in mind and weren't really designated for an experience like Battle Royale, but it just happened to be there and it might be taken away from the traditional Warzone experience that people have come to love over the last three years. And I get when people argue that they shouldn't reinvent the wheel and they don't have to. I get that too. I'm personally a fan of a lot of the big changes and improvements with Warzone 2 because it feels like IW8 Blackout. It feels like Blackout <laughs> on the Modern Warfare engine and it feels like they're really listening to feedback on how to really make it feel more like a BR and not something where, oh, you gotta watch a TikTok for the best loadout and use that non-stop for the next couple of weeks. Warzone 2 feels like, all right, you go in, you get as much money as you can, and you try to craft the best weapon you can at the buy station, and then you also use your environment to your advantage on top of all the new mechanics and improvements that Warzone 2 offers. Put all that together, and it's a truly new Warzone experience, much different from Warzone 1. But then you have the argument, too, what about all the quality of life improvements that Warzone 1 just got not too long ago? Gas mask toggle, and, and you know, features with the HUD, and a bunch of other things. Why are those things not going to be in Warzone 2 day 1? Those things 
things might be there, but right now, as it seems, is that a battle royale was just built on top of the DMZ experience. Now, a crazy turn of events could be that DMZ takes a spotlight this year, where that mode is the mode for the community, right? Obviously, people will be playing MP, people will still be playing Warzone 2, but DMZ might take the spotlight and be that mode that's most popular this year. That could happen, and I wouldn't mind that. We're going to cover everything anyway, but we'll see how the community reacts to all these new modes when they do come out. But the cool thing is that another big scale Battle Royale map is rumored to be in development for Warzone 2. So what I'm wondering, right, is when that map comes out, will it only be for BR or will it also be for DMZ? Could it just copy-paste over the DMZ formula onto a new map with ease? I'm not a dev or an engineer, so probably not. But maybe if it's possible, they can ensure that at least a second DMZ slash Warzone 2 experience releases at like maybe Season 4 next summer. That would be cool to see. And it also makes you think if you're a Black Ops fan, how Treyarch can use that technology to kind of turn DMZ into a zombies experience. And maybe in the next Black Ops game or maybe in 2024, an extra map gets added to the Warzone 2 application and it's made from Treyarch and has zombies on it and is a version of free-to-play outbreak. That would be insane, right? Keep round base and all those other LTMs within Black Ops 2024 zombies you have to pay for, for sure. Obviously, DLC will be free, but, you know, the base game itself. But then Outbreak could be its own thing like DMZ, free to play inside of the Warzone 2 app. But on the topic of Treyarch and zombies, I do want to mention something, right? Because Outbreak released in a very specific state during, what, Season 2 of Cold War? And the mode was fun. It was promising. There was only a couple of regions you could play on. There was only a couple of objectives. No main Easter egg, nothing too crazy. But the mode got better over time. By Season 6, you almost can't recognize the mode in comparison to what it was when it came out in season two there is so much to do in outbreak two full main quests multiple multiple regions lots of new objectives and the replayability is through the roof so if outbreak would have released in that state people's opinion on the mode would have been different off the get-go but now that people out there are realizing we're gonna have zombies for quite some time they're going back to outbreak and realizing how crazy the mode is so i'm just hoping that when dmz comes out it's not similar to that where it releases fairly bare bones and gets better with you know four or five seasons hopefully the mode releases actually pack with plenty of content and only gets better with the extra seasons adding on to a strong foundation. Now what's also interesting is it was confirmed that perks will not be available in Warzone 2 at least not at launch. They are coming later but I wonder how that'll work right? Do you have to buy them at a buy station? I mean if they're not in Warzone 2 at launch then does it also mean that they're not in DMZ either? That's probably the case and Fajardi brought up a great point on the podcast earlier this week where he mentioned that the way perks should work they're trying to really make sure Warzone 2 feels like a true BR is not where you can loot the perks themselves or get from a loadout but maybe you can do something like go to a buy station and select it or, or go somewhere and select a perk and then you have to get a certain amount of kills to then use the perk or you have to stay in the game a certain amount of time to unlock that perk similar to the perk packages for multiplayer where they're either time based or kill based some of them at least where you don't just spawn in with them so that could be a way to encourage players to not only stay in the game longer without backing out or encourage them to get kills faster but it'll also ensure that nobody's really juiced up to the max towards you know the first half of that battle royale match but then i wonder right depending on what system they use for perks in warzone 2 will the system they end up putting into dmz be transferred over to warzone 2 or vice versa i wonder how that'll work with updates this year where if something gets added to either warzone 2 br or dmz will that automatically be transferred over instantly to the other mode or will things be added exclusively to one and not the other that's what i'm wondering now as a reminder to end this video off modern warfare 2 and warzone 2 are indeed going to be separate applications I know that's confusing right now because at the beta menu, you can see Warzone 2 right there. So people assume, oh, they'll just be in the same application whenever they end up releasing it, which would mean we'll get the same issue like Warzone 1, where whenever one gets updated, the other game breaks. That's not going to happen. We have Joe Seacott putting out a statement that you should be able to download them separately. The integration, though, will be seamless. So you don't have to exit the game to switch, but you determine the installation yourself. So it's fairly simple, really. I mean, it's kind of how Modern Warfare 19 works already with the data packs, right? You have the game downloaded, but you can uninstall certain modes right you can hop in there and campaigns playable but not the multiplayer or spec ops is playable but not the campaign you can have that so it's kind of the same system except better integrated <laughs> this time around compared to the past couple of years so it'll just be as simple as clicking x on warzone 2 and going straight into a lobby which is awesome so that's what joe seacott's referring to although it might be confusing because you'll just see them both sitting next to each other at the main menu which goes back to the original rumor about that disney plus like hub that's what modern warfare 2 is and i wonder when other cops come out in the future will you also be able to see those games at the menu next to mw2 and warzone 2 but that is about it this has been dk dynamite leave our thoughts down below in the comment section what are your thoughts on the upcoming sandbox mode known as DMZ, what are your thoughts on the first details and what it means for the future? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.